Greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Today, we celebrate the life, but more importantly, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we begin our service, we're going to have our most wise and our officers come up to relight the candles. Doctrine on him who died for the resurrection of humanity has become the living son of truth. The doctrine that the love of God for his children in his infinity. And the true religion is to love our brother, rise like the blessed, blessed son, triumph from darkness. <clears throat> the doctrine of him who said unto others that which you would do unto others which you would unto which, which should unto you suffer little chicken to come unto me and forbid them not for of such the kingdom of heaven. Love God with all thy might, heart, soul, and thy neighbor as thyself, and thou shalt live as become the light and the life of intelligent minds of every creed. The doctrine of him who suffered an enormous death, a grievance. Enduring to substitute truth forever, love for hatred and persecution has gone around the world. Prevail against ignorance and substitution. The doctrine of him who gave his life for proclaiming that all men, children of the common father, were brethren, shine upon us from the awful light of the past. The doctrine of him who gave his life for his friends to ensure forever the liberty of the oppressed, the rights of the weak, and the overthrow of tyranny over mind and body has become the supreme law of regenerated humanity. He is risen. For he has risen. Liberty, equality, and fraternity, baptized in the blood of him who died on Calvary. Henceforth march steadily onward towards certain and complete victory over ignorance, fanaticism, and despotic power.
The world of life and regeneration is recovered, and the law of love lives. You may be seated. Thank you, illustrious sirs. Again, good morning. Good morning. To the head of this house, Reverend Kisner, all dignitaries. At this time, we will have Dr. George Lockhart lead us in a selection of Near the Cross. Let us all stand. by our first lieutenant commander Antonio Marshall good morning good morning good morning, good morning. he has risen yes. thank you all for coming out this morning I know it's hard to get up this early on a Sunday but <laughs> we're all in here so I have the task of doing the inv invocation Almighty God, who through the dying only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, has overcome death and opened unto us the gate of everlasting life, we humbly beseech thee that by the special grace we shall to find that there will be nothing preventing us from attaining the same victory. Thou doest put into our minds good desires, so by thy con continual help we may bring the same good effect. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigns with thee and the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Second Lieutenant Admar Blaylock for our scripture reading. Good morning, could you um, 
Please stand. <laughs> if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things who, which are above, where Christ seeth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on the things above, not on the things on earth, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then ye also appear within him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil lust, and cultivation, which is idolatry for which things are safe, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, and the which ye also walked the some time when ye lived in them. Amen. Dr. George Lockhart, will you please lead us in another selection entitled, We Are Climbing Jacob's Ladder. Let's all stand. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Soldier of the Every round goes higher and higher. Every round goes higher and higher. Every round goes higher and higher. We're soldiers. On the cross, sinner, do you love of my Jesus? Sinner, do you love my Jesus? Sinner, do you love my Jesus? Soldiers of the cross. If you love him, why not serve him? If you love him, why not serve him? If you love him, why not serve him, soldier of the cross? We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder with soldiers of the cross. If you will, please remain standing. The earth is the Lord's, and all that therein is the compass of the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and prepared it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall rise up in his holy place? Even he that hath clean hands and a pure heart and hath not lift his mind unto vanity nor sworn to deceive his neighbors. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, even of them that seek thy face. 
Oh, Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and by ye lift up every lasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? It is the Lord, strong and mighty, even the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, and O ye gates, and by ye lift up ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king? Even the Lord host. He is the king of glory. Thank you. At this time, we will have another selection. What a friend we have in Jesus. seated at this time. Next we will have a sermon by the nun only Reverend Gerald D. Kisner who is pastor of this church, Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you. Good morning, good morning. Aren't you glad to be here on this glorious morn, this Resurrection Sunday? Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise for waking all of us up this morning, early in the morning. And uh, I want to thank my brothers uh, for allowing me this opportunity, uh, even though I'm not a morning person. Uh, so <laughs> it is a joy to be here to see all my brothers and my sisters who thought it not robbery to come out. And I just ask that you uh, lift me up in prayer as we try to bring a word this morning. Um, there is a word that I want to take from the book of Matthew. It's the 28th chapter. It may be familiar to many of us, but I want to read a few verses. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Sacred Writ. You may follow from whatever translation you happen to have. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For the fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. 
Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about come morning. Come morning. Pray with me now, will you, saints? Spirit, spirit of the living God, please, please now fall afresh upon this word. Oh, God, touch it anew that it might challenge us, direct us, guide us. And oh, God, even if it has to break us, somehow, Lord, through the power of your Holy Spirit, we might leave this place just a little different from when we entered. And God, as always, always, we will be so very, very careful to give you all of the praise and the glory for you, only you, are worthy. This is our prayer in Jesus' name that all of God's children say, Amen. Come morning. My sisters and brothers, I think as we survey the landscape politically, socially, and in our own individual lives, I think I can say without contradiction that we are in a dark, dark time. It continues to disturb me when we see all the blatant lies that are being lifted up from the highest places of government. We see continuous lies that are being bandied about. And I guess someone has said if you tell a lie long enough, maybe folk will start believing it. And I'm wondering if this is the strategy that 45 has been using because all he does is lie. And people, my brothers and sisters, are so gullible. They're so willing to fall for the hype and drink the Kool-Aid. One person has said that uh, he is actually the Jim Jones of politics. That folk are drinking the Kool-Aid knowing or maybe not knowing that it's surely death. When we see all the nastiness that is in our environment, the governor-to-be, or who's running for governor in North Carolina, a brother, has basically slandered a sister and called her out of her name. And, and, and this is the common parlance that we see in political life. There's no such thing as arguing ideas or concepts. It's about belittling and talking nasty to one another. And we see this as becoming the trend Folk are saying that we can say anything, do anything, and it makes no difference. And then some folk even have the other audacity to say that they're Christians. And yet, I read somewhere that we're supposed to love everybody. And yet the language and the activities that is being articulated is anything but love. And every day we see someone that has committed a horrendous crime. Right here the other night, a estranged husband kills his estranged wife and then kills himself. Every day you pick up the newspapers and there's some horrific crime that has taken place either here or across the country. And who cannot but feel sympathy for the four folk in Baltimore who when these construction workers left their house that evening, little did they know that that would be the last time that they saw their loved ones. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, it appears we really are in dark, dark times. Oh, I don't know about you, but there's someone under the sound of my voice and someone watching is in a dark time in their life. There's something that's going on that seems to engulf them in darkness. Oh, I don't know about you, but I've been in a dark place at some point in my life. Jesus himself said that the rain will fall on the just and the unjust alike. There's no way, my brothers and sisters, you can get out of this life without some tragedy. There's no way you can get out of this life without some heartbreak and some hardship. There's darkness that seems to surround us. I say that there's darkness in all phases of our life right now. And even on this Resurrection Sunday, even during the season of resurrection, there's a lot of darkness. Well, that was the situation in this pericope that I lifted up. Those women, and it's interesting to note, fellas, that it was the women, not the men. It was the women that were right there at the foot of the cross. The brothers had ran and hid. They were afraid. But it was the sisters that stood there at the foot of the cross. It was the sisters early in the morning when it was still darkness 
that went to the tomb. And they went to finish off the particulars of his burial. They wanted to make sure that their Lord had a proper burial. They wanted to make sure that they gave honor to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. But I say, as they made their way to that tomb, it was shrouded in darkness. They were moving inexorably to the place where they thought there was going to be an encounter with death. Too often, and many of us, all of us, have been in that dark place where we've dealt with the loss of a loved one and is surrounded in darkness. Oh, my brothers and sisters, the great bugaboo in all humanity is death. That's the great fear. We, we are so afraid of darkness. I don't know about y'all, but when we were little kids, we were scared of the nighttime. Sunshine was wonderful. We played outside, all, but at nighttime, we were a little different. In fact, many of us would even sleep with the lights on because we were afraid of the darkness. And so here, the Marys walked to this tomb. I can imagine their hearts were heavy because they were shrouded in darkness. They expected to see their loved one, Jesus the Christ. They expected to see him laid out dead done finished it's darkness and oftentimes when we're in the cemetery that's what surrounds us doesn't it we're thinking about death wondering what's going to happen and then to their surprise they were shocked to find out that the tomb was empty they were shocked to find out that death did not have the final say. And somebody needs to know that even in your darkness, that morning will come. And when morning comes, everything is and will be all right. They found out that their Lord, who had said, I will rise on the third day, had done what he said he was going to do. And it wasn't just Jesus, it was God. God had reached in that tomb and lifted up our Savior and brought him back to life. And the good news on this Resurrection Sunday is that not only did he come up out of the grave, all oh, the old preachers used to say, he got up. But he got up with all power in his hand. He got up with able to say that death was no longer going to hold you. He got up saying that he had the power of life and death in his hands. Well, there's a couple things I want to say before I close. First of all, when they arrived at the tomb, they found out that Jesus' word was good. Someone needs to know today that whatever you're going through, whatever the darkness you're in, you can count on his words. Jesus' promises are good. He had told the disciples, he had told all of the folk who listened, on the third day, I'm going to rise up. On the third day, all power will be given to me. He promised. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to depend on the promises of Jesus. He promised never to leave you alone. He promised to pick you up when you're broken down. He promised to make a way out of nowhere. He promised to lift you up when you're broken down. He promised to never, ever leave you alone. One of the things, my brothers and sisters, when morning comes, it chases away all the darkness. When morning comes, you can take the licking and keep on ticking. When morning comes, you know that the Lord will make a way out of nowhere. When morning comes, sunshine rises, and in your life, whatever was sad is now joyful. The second thing they understood, and one for you and I, if you're in Christ Jesus, you don't have to worry about anything. He told them, I will go before you. I will be in front of you, and he'll also be behind you. He told the disciples that meet me in Galilee. There I will have something to tell you. See, you need to understand. You need to understand that whatever you're going through, if it's rough or tough, you just need to hold on. Grandma used to say, hold on to God's unchanging hand. My granddaddy used to say, don't let go the rope. And too often, you and I, when we get a little patch of badness, we want to throw in the towel. We wonder, oh God, why me? Oh God, why me? But do you ever ask God that when all the blessings are coming your way? Do you ever say, God, why am I getting all these blessings? 
don't blame God. God allows calamity to stretch you. God allows calamity to make you grow. God allows calamity to show you how powerful God is. Someone said, if I didn't have trouble, I wouldn't know that God could solve it. If I didn't have adversity, I wouldn't know how to rejoice on this resurrection Sunday. If I didn't know there was an empty tomb, I wouldn't know how to get up and say, praise God from whom all blessings flow. If there was not an empty tomb, I wouldn't know my God can do anything but fair. Are there any witnesses in the house? When you were down and out, when they said you didn't have a way out, God said yes. When the culture said no, God said yes. God lifted you up. And the last thing, my brothers and sisters, not only did Jay learn that they could depend on his word, not only did they see that he would be in front of them, but then they realized the power of our great God. Yes, Jesus is all right, but Jesus is the son of God. It was God that reached in that tomb. It was God that said, come on up, son. I'm going to sit you at my left hand. It was God who gave him all power, power to make us right, power to cleanse us, power to forgive our sins, power to give us love, power to make us right, power to help us to fight adversity, power to give us justice, power to know that he is the risen Savior. And on this Resurrection Sunday, I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to praise him. I'm going to keep on praising him. I'm going to give him all the glory because he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. How do I know he lives? Because he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. Do you believe in the resurrection? Do you believe that he makes ways? Do you believe he'll take care of you? He will lift you up when you're broken down. Oh, praise his wonderful name. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to his name. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for that, that message this morning. He lives. So when we leave today, we need to make sure that we walk as if he lives. At this time, we'll have our Commander-in-Chief, Sublime Prince Jeremy Mayfield Sr., to give us remarks. My apologies. Before that, we will have our offering. Can we have the offering team come up front? Oh, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to gather together in unity. This is the day that the Lord has made, and uh, this is a part of the ceremony when uh, everybody can participate. So uh, I'm going to ask uh, you to follow the directions of our usher, and uh, I would ask uh, uh, our musician, uh, Brother Rath Pittman Jr., to uh, play us some marching music. So. At this time, let us stand, center. Also, for those who would like to give electronically, you can go to GiveFly. It will be posted on the screen momentarily.
All right, at, at this time, I'm uh, going to ask uh, Honorary Past Master and Deacon uh, Joe Baker to uh, pray over our offer. Oh, mighty God, we come this morning on this great day that you let us get up early this morning to come out and give you thanks. And Father, we just say thank you for this wonderful and blessed day. And Father, we bring the tithes and offering back to the storehouse, Father. And Father, we ask that these tithes and offering be used for the betterment of your house here on earth, Father. And Father, for those that gave, we thank you for those, Father. And as we continue this day forward from this early morning into our next service, we again say thank you, Father. Thank you. And we ask, Father, you continue to give us strength and give our families understanding, keep it us safe, Father, in everything we do. And we praise you and lift you up, Father. We glorify you, Father. And we'll call your name and we say hallelujah to you, Jesus, and your son, Jesus. We say thank you in your name. We pray forever. Amen. Amen. I come to you again. Good evening. Good morning. Uh, I want to say I hope everybody enjoyed that word. It was a beautiful word. Uh, before we before we proceed to remarks, we have a couple of uh, presentations. I would like my CIC to join me up here, please, sir. And my second lieutenant. Can you hear me now? All right. <laughs> uh, first, we have a donation for the church to the culinary department because they have fixed us such great food this morning. Um, so if I could have someone from the church come up to accept the donation because I know they're down uh, cooking. So this is a small donation and thanks for us. Preparing breakfast for us and, and getting us some good early. So thank you very much. And we have a second donation, which is uh, for our dynamic speaker this morning, <laughs> Reverend Brother Kistner. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, when I, when, I, when I was getting this program together and I reached out to him, he was like, yeah, I'll do it. I ain't got no problem with it. <laughs> so thank you so much for thank doing you. this, sir, and we appreciate you, okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, at this time, uh, Commander-in-Chief, if you will, come up. Good morning, church. Good morning. To Reverend Kissner, uh, thank you very much, sir, for bringing that wonderful sermon this morning, and thank you for allowing us to use your home this morning. Uh, to the brothers, the sisters, thank you all for coming out this morning. Um, I always got to recognize our, our very own Reverend Ely. If Reverend Ely can be here and be here on time, brothers, we have no excuse why we can't be here and on time. So thank you very much, Reverend Ely. Uh, but at this time, I also like to acknowledge the ladies if the loyal lady ruler or her representative would like to stand and recognize her members time with all the members of Samuel T. Brady. Please stand. Again, to our visitors, to the assembly, to the members, 
Thank you all for coming out. Good morning, Reverend Kisner. Thank you again. At this time, I'd like to bring up our very own GIG, the illustrious overseer Solomon Burgess. Good morning. First, I would like to say thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and seeing it not robbery to come this early morning sunrise service. This is a tradition for Scottish Rite Masonry and a tradition for Samuel T. Brady. Um, so that um, I don't get in trouble, let me make sure that I mention uh, some folks and make sure that everybody is um, acknowledged. Um, first, uh, Honorable Jeffrey G. Jones, 19th Most Worshipful Grand Master of this uh, Most Worshipful Union Grand Lodge. Um, second, I would like to mention uh, Sovereign Grand Inspector General, Lieutenant Commander, Grand Commander of the United Supreme Council Southern Jurisdiction, Southern Jurisdiction, Chris Hall affiliated. Um, also, not to um, forget and be remiss, our Deputy for the Orient, Sovereign Grand Inspector General, Chris Terrell, 33rd degree active. Um, also mentioned earlier, but I would um, not like to, I don't want to forget her. Um, Grand State Le Lawyer Lady Ruler, Asia McMillan. Again, could you stand? And thank you for your support over these years. To the Lawyer Lady Ruler, Lawyer Ladies of Sam Brady Assembly, thank you for taking time out of your uh, schedule to come support us. The Sam Brady members, brothers, thank you. You showed out in numbers today. And again, um, just to leave you with the thought, um, we don't value some time, our time and the people that's in our lives. You know, years have gone by and we've lost members and we can see the faces that are, or forget the faces that are not in the crowd today. So I just want to take time to say, you know, I thank you, I value you. I value all of you that have come this morning. Thank you to Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church. You've always been a friend to Samuel T. Brady and hopefully that everybody enjoy their Easter and Resurrection Sunday. Good morning. At this time, we will call back to the podium uh, Reverend Kisner for our benediction. Again, thank you so much. We appreciate having you here, and we thank all of you for coming out. And it's a good way to start off this wonderful day of celebration. Amen. Uh, Judge. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and have the benediction, and you all can go downstairs and get, get a little, little vittles. Amen. All right. <laughs> I know you're hypnotized, right? <laughs> all right. Heavenly Father, creator of all, the great architect of the universe, we humbly come submitting to your will and thanking you on this grand and glorious day when we can reflect and remember that great, great day when our Lord and Savior came back, told death no more. We thank you for this gathering. We thank you for all that our eyes have seen and all that our ears have heard on this glorious morn. We pray now as we're about to leave this sacred space that our continuing prayers that were never ever far from thee Keep each and every one of us safe, sound, covered, and protected till we can gather together again and lift up the mighty name of Jesus. And now may the love of our awesome, gracious God, the peace of our elder brother, our risen Savior, Jesus is his name, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, abide, reside, and preside over each and every one of you henceforth, now, and forever, and ever. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Stay safe. Have a wonderful rest of the day.